Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another first impression pattern video where I review all the new patterns in either a collection or a new release from Big Four. And believe it or not, we are cranking through the summer sewing patterns from Big Four. This is Simplicity's new collection that we will be reviewing today. If you are new here, my name is Lindsay. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you found me. I hope you love these pattern review videos as much as I love recording them. Um, we just get to do a deep dive into each of the patterns and kind of overanalyze them really. <laughs> um, and just have a lot of fun talking about fit, fabrication, and overall design. So sit back, grab a cup of tea, a snack, whatever you need, and let's take a look. So this first one is a dress, obviously. This is a sewing pattern for an easygoing pullover dress with curved waist seam and gathered skirt with side pockets. These sundresses feature a v-neck with stitched facings, okay? Two length options, mid knee and lower calf, includes roll sleeve, long sleeve with button cuff and a sleeveless option. So let's take a look. It is quite a deep V, if I do say so myself. I imagine her bust apex is somewhere in this area. So this is hitting pretty low. If you have a fuller chest, lots of cleavage, that's definitely gonna show on this guy. But you can see here, do you see that little stitching line going through the red stripe? That's the stitch facings that they are talking about. So you're gonna make a facing, turn it to the inside, and then you actually stitch it down. So it's not gonna be one of those ones that can flop out, which is a really nice detail. It does make it a little more casual, a little more sporty, which is fun. All right, so then we've got the curved hem here with the gathers, not a very extreme gather either. It's not even like a two to one, maybe a one and a half to one. And then your side seam pockets and then the full length. This is the mid calf version. Easy, breezy, lightweight, loose fitting, very, very casual dress that we have here. And I didn't even notice that there's a center front seam. So if I had this striped fabric, I would be cutting this on the bias so that you'd have like a fun little V shape here with your stripes and then all of these be vertical. Little missed opportunity there, I think. But nonetheless, this is... I think she's wearing the sleeveless version. This is the sleeved version with the cuff, which I absolutely adore. That would be so cute in so many fabrics. Here is the long sleeve version. No reason why you couldn't wear this in spring, summer, fall. I mean, maybe not summer, but at least where I live. But um, you could definitely make this pattern throughout the year and be able to wear it nonstop. Um, yeah, so no closures. It just pulls on. Um, I think they have a little funny punker here with the with one of their gathers. That's what's creating that interesting fold. But yeah, you just pull it on and you're good to go. It is very low in the arm side. You can see that you can see her bra really under there. So probably okay for the sleeved versions, but for this sleeve less version, I would consider shortening that, which means you shorten the facing um, and you just get a little bit of coverage there. All right, there are our line drawings. And let's see the, wait, where's the back of the envelope? Hold on. There's no back of the envelope on the website anymore? You guys. Okay, I hope that's not the case with all of them. Am I missing something? No, it should be right here. <gasps> oh no. All right, let's see if it's like that with the next one. Because normally at this point, if you've been watching these videos, you know that we'll talk about different types of fabrics. We'll talk about the yardage you need, if there's finished garment measurements. Um, there's still lots of information to unpack about these patterns. <gasps> This one doesn't have it either. What the heck? All right, well, I don't know if that's a mistake. Like they just forgot to put it on the website or if this is like some new thing they're trying. Either way, I don't like it. And I imagine you don't either. All right, well, real quickly, going back to that first pattern, I imagine the fabric suggestions are going to be something along the lines of like the midweight cottons. 
So all of your cotton blends, something in a linen, um, something with a little bit of structure, but also still lightweight and breathable. Um, you could definitely make it in a lighter weight fabric, like a rayon or something like that. It'll just, you know, hang a little bit closer to the body and not give you kind of that structure that you're looking for. No closures. I imagine you need interfacing for your facings. Um, and then that's all I can really hypothesize. The rest of it, yardage, no idea. Um, sizing, no idea. Um, dang, I cannot believe they don't have those. All right, well... <laughs> I guess we'll just make do with what with, with the information that we do have here. Okay, so the next dress is, or it's actually a top and a dress, tiered shirt dress has length and sleeve variations. View A blouse has long sleeves, contrast yoke and collar band. Shirt dresses come in knee and midi lengths and collar and collar band variations. So it seems to be like a lot going on with this one. Um... All right, so this is obviously one of the dresses, and you've got a front yoke, you've got a set-in sleeve that gathers into this pretty, I mean, it's really pretty little sleeve. You've got a, like, full collar with the collar stand and everything, button band all the way down. Uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be a waist seam or not. Obviously, the where the belt is, that's her waist. So is this a drop waist? It didn't mention that. Um, so this could be just like a, a long bodice where you might need to alter that by like several inches, three, four inches or something. Um, and then you have this lower tier here, which also has even more gathers and the button band continues all the way down. Here is the shirt version where they have left off the collar but left the collar stand they did contrast, I imagine this is supposed to be like a some kind of lace or eyelet or something in the yoke, and then your long sleeve with elastic. And then here is, that does look to be a pretty dropped waist, right? That does look a little bit lower than where the waist would normally sit. Is this a dress still, or is this like a tunic length? If we go back to... Yeah, it's just this first one here. I bet her knee is like somewhere around here. So it's about a knee length. It looks really short. The proportions look a little bit funny um, with this being so long and then this being so short. But yeah, I imagine this is knee length. And then you've got a sleeveless version. Again, without the collar, just the collar stand. Um, and no sleeve, but everything else about the model version is the same. Here's the back. So... You can see the back yoke. You can see that dropped waist stops pretty much at her high hip. And then you've got the, the third ruffle as well. So again, another option that obviously is great for summer, but you can make this to wear year round. Um, I imagine for summertime, they're suggesting like she's wearing eyelet. I think this had some kind of combination of eyelet and cotton, but you can also make it out of lightweight and drapey fabrics too, because it does have that ruffle. It just will lay closer to the body. So like, see how this is kind of like floating away from her. All of this will be just kind of um, closer in draping closer to your body. And I don't know, this styling with the belt is okay. But I like to lean in when something is like loose like this and just, you know, let it flow. But maybe like in the fall and winter, I would consider belting it. But yeah, you get one, two, three, four sleeve options and then one, two, three length options. And then, of course, you can mess around with the collar as much as you want. Here are the line drawings. Yeah, that this looks to be better proportioned than that illustration, the short length. Classic shirt dress with tears. We've been seeing it for a few seasons now. It's nothing revolutionary, um, but that trend is very still very much happening. You're seeing it and ready to wear all over the place. So if you don't have a shirt dress like that yet, um, I think, and you think it might fit your personal style and something you might, you know, be able to wear in your like regular lifestyle, um, definitely grab it because I know I wear mine all the time. Okay, here's another top and dress pattern. This one has a ruched bodice and shoulder straps. I think that bodice is so pretty and elegant. 
UB has a ruffled peplum and elasticized puff sleeves. View C is a midi dress that has a ruched bodice, puff sleeve, gathered skirt with a ruffle. And view D is a long gown with the same bodice and shoulder straps. So here is a close up of that ruched bodice. So pretty. Do we think we have like a set of tacks going? Like, how are we doing this? This is not just like your regular gathers, right? Like that looks, that looks difficult. I don't know if it is. I mean, it's McCall's pattern, so it can't be that hard, but yeah. How are they getting all of this to stay? Is there some, there are a bunch of stitching lines in here that keep it all together? That's so interesting to me. Um, never sewn a anything like that before. So that would be fun just to learn how to do um, just, you know, technically. Uh, but then it gathers into this really pretty sweet gather here, this lightweight fabric, ankle length. And this is like some kind of crepe. So like a lightweight fabric. Here's the top version, equally cute. It doesn't have the ruching, but it does have princess seams and this little peplum and then this squared off neckline um elastic here on the shoulders and in the sleeves the sleeve hem then you get just the ruched top so if you just wanted to learn how to do this you could just make the top that would also be really fun and then this version also sweet. i love this one i love this pattern this is like lots of different options lots of different um places where i would see you wearing this like this seems a little bit more casual like picnic brunch Whereas the first one could be like a wedding guest dress. Um, and then it all kind of gathers into this invisible zipper in the back. Yeah, I think this is super cool. And I'm curious to see how it's done. Because again, I've never done it before. But yeah, all these options are like for a different occasion, which I think is so cool. love it okay so again for fabrication they use like a rayon crepe for this one which is really drapey for this one here truly like the world is your oyster you could probably make this out of a gajillion different fabrics anything light to mid-weight um because we have the gathered peplum and the gathered sleeve i wouldn't go anything heavier than like a mid-weight um but so many options live here and for the ruched bodice i do think you probably want to stick to the lightweight fabrics and or like the light weight side of midweight. So instead of like a midweight linen, think of your lightweight linens. Think of your linen blends. Think of cotton rayon blends, things like that. Um, because you do want the ruching to still be highlighted and not be really, I don't know. If, it gets, if your fabric is too structured, it can be a little bit funky. But for this one especially, you still have this ruffle tier, um, and so you would want that to have a little bit of structure to it. But you can kind of tell, I mean, you gotta use your imagination a little bit, but can you see how this is just like totally falling in on her body, whereas this one's like poofed away a little bit? That's gonna be the difference in structure. Here are your line drawings. I just love how many options there are, you know what I mean? And I imagine, I don't know, because I don't think we have the back again. Yeah, they, there's still no pattern back. But I imagine this is fully lined. And like this is the lining of this. So like you have a, everyone makes a little shell like this. And then if you're doing the ruching, you cut another piece of fabric that goes over this. I think, if I had to guess, that's what I would assume. There's some kind of lining here. And then obviously your zipper um, but I don't, I don't think the bodice would be interfaced. I don't think there's a, you know, a lot other than the zipper, the elastic lining and your regular, your self fabric. Okay. Next we have this fun little shirt dress, misses and women's. So we're going to have an extended size range here that goes from eight to 16, 18 to 24, and then the 26 to 32. And this one here is the new one that was just implemented earlier this year. So um, some of the McCall's patterns are coming in three envelopes now, which hallelujah, thank the Lord. Um, tie front shirt dresses, wrap around the waist for a cinched waist. Dress has collar, short and long sleeves, 
View A is midi knee length. Views B and C are midi length with shaped hem. So you can kind of see that curved hem here. Um, so it looks like the bodice has this like extension of a wrap to it. So interesting, so cool. For all of you that are hourglass or pear or anything where you want to accentuate a waist, this is how you can do it all in one garment. Love it. I love the shape of the, the collar as well is really good. How it's a little bit longer, I guess. Maybe it's a little bit bigger here. I don't know. I love the shape of that. We have like a little bit of a grown on like cap sleeve situation. I'd be interested to see this from the side to see if you can see in there. See how low it drops. And then this is the shape 10 that they were talking about. Really great and sweet. Yeah, shaped him. This is your long sleeve version. Love it in this like striped cotton. Perfect. It, but any kind of shirting would work for this. That's it with the short sleeve and the straight hem. Here it is from the back. Looks great. Yeah, looks really great. I just love all the shape that it gives. So good. This is a great, this is a great classic with a twist, basic with a twist, which is just totally my personal style. Um, I love to take basic patterns like this that have a little something going on with them, find unique fabrics for them, and that's pretty much my formula for designing my wardrobe. Oh, one thing that I didn't see but love is they have fisheye darts in the back. That's what's adding even more to that great shaping. Probably why the back of her dress looked so good. Very little commentary from me, which, <laughs> which as you guys know, when we get to the back, sometimes, you know, that lot of bad things can happen in the back. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really cool. I can, like I said, see it in a lot of different cottons and shirtings and fabrics of that nature. I would be a little bit careful about the wrong side of your fabric does show. Um, maybe they could have done a little bit better job of tying this so that it didn't show, but it would show here and it would also show a little bit on your hem as well. So just pay a little bit close attention to the back of your fabric. Make sure it's not, you know, too egregiously different than the front. All right. And I think for closures on that one, you just have your button band, your, yeah, your button band. So interfacing for the collar, interfacing for the button band, and then buttons for that. And then the buttons for the sleeve, if you do the long sleeve version. And this one comes in extended sizes, which is great. I think that will look so good on so many different body types. All right, we have a couple of vintage-y looking patterns. This one is a 1950s vintage reissue. Views A and B have fitted sweetheart bodice with tiered gathered skirt. Dress includes sew-in shoulder sash that can be tied multiple ways. I don't even know what that means. View B has contrast for print mixing or color blocking. Oh, I see. Okay, so you've got your sweetheart bodice, center front seam, a bit of a French dart here, because it's at an angle, and then your three tiers for your skirt. So, so far, pretty similar to whatever we see normally, like in these sort of tiered dresses. But this one has this little doodad up here that's sewn in at the like peak of your um, sweetheart. And then you can tie it around your waist. You can tie it up on itself. I bet you can wrap it around your neck. Like all of this little belt looking thing is loose and you can tie up this almost shawl like any way you want. Here is a one shoulder version where they pulled it around the back and then pulled this one down the front and then brought it around. You can see that there as well. So that's pretty cool, right? Both off the shoulder, also pretty. That's what the first version we looked at, that's what it looks like from the back. And again, they were talking about um, color blocking, print mixing. Here are some different sized ginghams. I mean, this is, the gingham kind of makes it like, 
very 1950s because I think back then it was like very casual fabrics mixed with sort of fancier designs but I can see this more as like a wedding guest situation um, in a bit more of an elegant fabric imagine like Dupioni um, some kind of you know crepe back satin something along those lines um, to, I mean, I think it would look like a million bucks. They probably also have some sort of petticoat or something under here making it really floofy. I think you could probably eliminate that and have, and just modernize it a little bit. But the idea of this is really cool and fun. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, so you can really see here what's going on. I imagine that there's no boning or support in this at all. So you couldn't just leave it hanging, which is an interesting idea. But you could just tie it like a halter and have these hang long. So many different options, even more than the ones that they showed. I love it. Super cool. All right. And that just came in the Mrs. Sizing. Here is a top and dress. It's giving me vintage vibes, but it doesn't say that it is. But if this doesn't look like a throwback, I don't know what does. That collar is something else. Um, and when I say misses, this is what I mean. 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24 is the size range and the misses. If it says women's, that's when they have the 26 to 32. Is that what it said? Tops and dresses have pointed and ruffled collar variations. Sleeve variations include short and long with elastic at hem. Three-quarter sleeve has narrow or wide cuff. High-waisted button-down dresses are knee-length with and without flounce. Okay, so this is the dress with the flounce. This is the three-quarter sleeve and the pointed collar. You can see we have some gathers here to create fullness for the bust. The sleeve gathers into a little cuff. And there might be some darting through here and then into our little flounce at the bottom and the buttons stop. Are these just two totally different buttons than the rest? <laughs> like they ran out of buttons and so they're like, well, let's just put these two on. Maybe no one will notice. <laughs> I always notice. I will always notice. Jeez. Okay. Um, and then here's the top. The top is kind of cool. So you've got your, I guess this is like elbow length sleeve into elastic, the pointed collar again. This is like a drapier fabric. Well, the first one was too, actually. Both sort of like in the crepe rayon world. Here is the ruffled collar, which those were like, I feel like might have hit their peak this time last year. They're still around. Um, I'm still seeing them, but maybe not as much as I used to. But I still think they're really fun. You just have to be careful of your fabric because you could go clown territory real quickly. Here's the dress version of the ruffled collar. And you can see that there is a side bust dart. Um, and then those gathers that I was talking about. And then two sets of pleats on the front. And then this long sleeve has a wider cuff and no flounce on the bottom here. Here's the back. So the back has a set of gathers as well. And then also another set of double darts it is still pretty fitted very like mermaidy you know we're still getting the mermaid situation happening here um but yeah this is definitely some kind of crepe ish type of fabric that they're using kind of long in the shoulder especially to have a sleeve head that pronounced But yeah, this just feels very like nine to five, the movie. <laughs> oh, very 1970s, early 80s working woman. You know, like this is what boss babes wore. The version, this version. This is a little bit better. Um, but there's not enough versions of this that I would wear often enough for me to buy this pattern. A little too specific, but I can see some people really pulling this off. Yep, so I think we found all the little design details on that. Next, we have this jumpsuit and romper. 
yeah, romper, jumpsuit, and sash. It is Mrs. and Women's, so that's going to come in the three size ranges. Flowy jumpsuit comes in extended sizing, which includes Mrs. and Plus sizes. Jumpsuit has gathered neckline, raglan sleeves, and hook and eye front opening. View A includes a sleeveless romper. Views include flutter, bell, and three-quarter sleeves. Sash is also included. Okay. She is so young and youthful. Okay, so what did they say? Raglan sleeves. You have a like neck band, some kind of hook and eye happening somewhere. Um, there, I don't think there's a waist seam. I think all there is is this sash to kind of cinch it in. This does look a little long in the rise to me. But the flowiness of it, that's a three-quarter sleeve as well. The flowiness of it is really cool. Okay, so here's maybe a little bit better of a picture. This is the this is the, what a raglan sleeve looks like when it's sleeveless, in case you didn't know. You finish off the neckband, and that becomes like your shoulder strap. But there are buttons up here, right? Or are those all hooks and eyes? I don't know. They come all the way down. Then there's your sash again. This is the flowy sleeve or flutter sleeve. Okay, so yeah, here's what it looks like without the sash. This, I feel like, is a little bit more trendy right now to have these jumpsuits that are very loose-fitting, lightweight, flowy, and not show any waist definition. But I like that they have the sash just in case you wanted to like have a moment where you're showing off your body a little bit. Here's the back. Really pretty in the back. Yeah, I don't know about the fit on this, on her. I'm feeling like maybe she might be a little bit more petite um, than what they are used to because it's just dropping down really low in the back. Normally, it would be like up here-ish. So it feels like something's happening there where they're having to pull it down. And I don't know if it's because like the rise looks okay here, but it's just hard to tell because of the flowiness of everything. There's just so much fabric here. It's hard to tell. It's just hard to tell what's going on. But I do like how all these gathers kind of gather into this belt. Yeah, I'm going to need to see this one on more bodies in order for me to be able to tell if I really like it or not. Here are the line drawings. Obviously, they used like a drapey fabric, which I'm sure that's what the envelope recommends, like rayons and stuff like that. But you could use cotton types, cotton blends, things like that. It would just stand further away from your body um, and be less flowy and like a little bit more structured. I want to love every single jumpsuit that's out there, but sometimes they're just more work than they are worth. And then this might be one of those. But the raglan, the raglan is something unique that I haven't seen a lot of in jumpsuits. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Now we're into pants. This is <laughs> going to be an interesting one. Um, shorts and pants. <laughs> High-waisted, gathered, wide leg pants and shorts have yokes with front pockets. Um, yeah, they sure do. So... I don't know what I think about a pant with a super pronounced front yoke like this into gathers, mostly because if you have any semblance of a pouch, if you've had a child, if you've had even a lot of weight loss and you just have like anything extra going on here other than just a super flat tummy, I just feel like this is going to extenuate that. It's going to look like a little pouch for your pouch. Uh, looks great on her. Obviously, she works out and, you know, is very lean through this area. I can't say for sure that she works out. She might not lift a single weight. Who knows? Um, but she is very slim through her front belly. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I just can't imagine this being super... I hate to use the word flattering, but I, I, you know what I mean. Like, I just... Yeah, I don't know that this is going to 
make all of our bodies look the best that they possibly can. That said, if you think this is super cool, go for it. But there's a little pocket there. You do get into it through a front fly, which is also really interesting. I wonder how hard it is to match up this seaming. That's the version she's wearing. And honestly, in the line drawing, it looks pretty cool, but I just can't see that translating. The back looks nice enough. They use some kind of like rayon chambray type of fabric for this. I don't know about this deep wedgie that she's got though. That makes me a little bit nervous. Plus also this is twisting into her bottom. That's all very weird. So yeah, I like to try things that are unique and different. And this is certainly a basic with a twist, but this might be too twisted. <laughs> a little too twisted for me. Um, I don't know, but you know what is going to happen? I know some people out there are going to make this and it's going to look freaking amazing and I'm going to have FOMO because <laughs> um, it will look really good on some people. I can see them like totally rocking that. Yeah. Okay, now we are into tops. This might be close to the end. We have a learn to sew. I love the learn to sew patterns. Um, square and round necklines have darts for better fit. Tops have sleeveless, short puff sleeve, and long elasticized sleeve options. Tops have side invisible zipper. I mean, it's not really necessary. And then view, he, view C has a collar. Okay, so we've got the square neckline that looks to be a little bit big on her. The darts seem a little long, especially the side dart, but you can see the beautiful shaping that you do get through here. The dart goes all the way to the hem. Um, the hem extends to your, almost your low hip. And then you've got the puff sleeve with the cuff, sleeveless. And then your long sleeved version. Even in the illustrations, the darts look long. Oh, and then you had a little Peter Pan collar version too. I mean, I quite like this outfit, the way they styled it. I can't imagine it styled any better than this. Certainly, I can imagine it styled a lot worse. Um, it's fine. You know, it's fine. Certainly, if you like fitted tops like this, I imagine you're going to love it. There's a really pretty back dart as well. No doubt about it. The shape of the bodice is truly beautiful. Um, it fits her really, really well. And I imagine it would fit all of us really well, too. Um, I just don't know about the... Um, I just don't know if this feels like early 2000s cool, like we're bringing it back, or like you dug this out of the clearance bins at Goodwill. So, and you can see it's a little bit wide for her, which is why we're getting this little fold through here. Just a little bit big through the, um, from the bust upward on her. But this bodice looks really good. And then I think you just have a whole bunch of facings here. Um, neckline with a collar, invisible side zipper, square neckline, and darts for a better fit. So, yeah, you certainly would learn to sew a lot of different skills on this one. This is also level two. They have one through three. Here are your line drawings. Again, a seasonless pattern. Summer, spring, fall, winter. Only in the Mrs. Size range on that. And then we've got some tween and little girl outfits. We've got some stuffies, costumes, accessories. Are they calling this an apron? Wait, what? Tunic? Is this a top? What's happening?
What are we making here? You've got a top with rips in it. You've got a skirt that looks like a men's shirt wrapped around your waist, which that's actually pretty cool. You've got a headband. What are they? What is this called? Slouchy knit hat. You've got gloves, a belt, and two bags. Is this like a costume? I'm confused. What is this? Like why? Why why are all these things packaged together like that? Here's the skirt though. That is pretty cool, right? I don't understand why all these are together like that. I do love her hair though. Um, and then you've got some other bags, I think. You've got aprons. Oh, gardening items. Okay. Then you've got kitchen decor and apron. And you've got nursery stuff. And that's it. So a lot of accessories here at the end with some costuming and teen and tween and little girl stuff, which I don't review because I don't make that stuff. So I don't really know. Like, for example, is this a costume? Because if so, that's why I'm confused. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's why I'm like, why? Like, who is that supposed to be? Just like grungy girl? Anyways, I could, uh, my mind is like spiraling thinking about that. Okay. Anyways, those are our patterns from McCall. It looks like we have about nine women's patterns, um, one of them being vintage. Curious to know what you guys think. There's really only a couple of them in here that I'm going to add to my collection. First of all, this one for sure, just to see how that ruched top is done. And then this little shirt dress here. This is a maybe, a maybe, you know, maybe if they go on 99 cent sale or something. But I'd love to know what you guys think, um, which of these patterns are your favorite um, which ones do you just do not understand, do not get at all? Um, uh, but that is going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Bye!